today new video uh, I'm showing you how to make a fall flight video I had no idea what that was um, somebody requested it I looked into it it took a while because this one is a hard one uh, I didn't figure out how to make it with a frame that's moving so I made this clip myself because I couldn't find a clip that works as I wanted so basically the frame is not moving but things are moving inside of the frame so we're gonna do it twice because I have two different methods and yeah so that's what it looks like at the end you could use the same thing to make like a map or something without the first part I guess so yeah so first thing I'm gonna drag my clip onto my timeline and I'm going to use motion tracking to determine the movement of the dots. So I'm going to start with the red, red dot, for example. So I'm going to go to the first frame, make my uh, motion tracking window smaller. Uh, I'll link to a video about motion tracking, by the way. Um, that's how I learned everything about it. So yeah. That will be in the description and in the little, uh, what's it called? Fish, I don't know, thing. Okay, so then you just go to analyze. You can change the keyframe spacing and stuff. Uh, I've noticed for this one, this was perfect, so I didn't change it at all. <laughs> um, it will take a few seconds and then you have the tracking. Let's see if it looks right. So yeah, the rectangle is following my red dot. It's moving, it's moving, and we have it the whole way. It's perfect. So I can pause it, and then just copy the tracking data here, add a, um, oh yeah, so then it's the weird part. So I'm gonna add a roundup clip, project add, I don't know, a color, no, not a sequence. <laughs> add a color clip, add whatever, like it really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna add it here. Add a composite, uh, no, add a transform to that um, clip. Okay. And here I'm gonna import keyframes from clipboard. So the thing I just um, copied. Um, everything is good. I just say okay. And now here, uh, if I select this, I have the, fr like, the path that my red dot is taking. And so this is kind of not a clean way to do it but i'm gonna just screenshot this so if i do um shift uh screen grabbing i don't know how it's called uh i can just select just the part that's interesting to me so this part here uh you can also make a full one like i don't really care how you screen grab your thing and then i'm gonna go to gimp so i'm gonna open gimp i have it here i'll make a new one new image uh, size of the, my uh, normal thing then i will import the image i just took uh actually i'll go to recent in here i will make it the right size so like this big and then i will make a new layer that's transparent i will use the path tool to follow the path so i will start from the end uh, because i want to be able to make a wipe after and this will be useful because um, you need the path to be in the right direction if you want uh, the cross to be right so yeah i will just follow this you can just adjust all of the keyframes uh, you could also make this with Inkscape or whatever program you want, of course. Uh, you can even try to eyeball it with GIMP, but I think it's better if you use the uh, path tracing tool, because then it really, like, yeah, you can change it and stuff. So right now it seems pretty good. So I'm going to do a uh, trace path. I'm not sure what it's called. I think it must be like trace path or something. It will open a window like this. Uh, I will just do a normal line without any color actually i will change the color because i want it to be like uh, red the same red as my dot so i will make it dark red like this uh, so yeah trace the path 
I choose trace a line, whatever size you want, I chose 20, and I do trace, and now I have a line. And I'm gonna do this a second time to make the wipe. So this time I'm not gonna just use a line, I'm gonna use a gradient. So I'm gonna go into my uh, brush, change the size to 21. Make sure that the brush is just a, like just a circle, no like uh, blurry thing. So size to 21, so it's just a bit bigger than my line. And then dynamics, color from gradient. And then my gradient is gonna be black to white, well, white to black. Okay, so then I can go back to my paths. I can select it here and trace it again. This time I'm gonna use the option to trace with a tool. And then I can just do trace and it goes perfectly like this. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, when you're in the brush here, uh, you need to have the length to be the right one. I already uh, did this one, so I know that this is the number I need for the length that I have of my path here. If it's longer, you're gonna need a higher number. If it's smaller, you're gonna need a smaller number. I've done other videos with this before, so you can check it out. Okay, so right now I have everything I need. I go back to my layers and I can just, um, shit. Ah, I just realized, Control Z, Control Z. I need to make a new layer <laughs> before I trace this, the path. So I'm gonna go back to um, my path, select it, trace, and go. Yeah, because I need two different layers, of, obviously. And this one is red, this one is black and white. I'm just gonna hide my path so you can see it better. Change, yeah. Okay, so this one I'm gonna render, well, export as um i'll name it like path you can name it whatever you want of course dot pgm this is very important pgm makes it like the right thing for wipes export um and then i'll go to my uh, red thing export and this one to png um classic then We'll go back to our Canon Live thing, copy the PGM, and you need to put it into this path. So your thing, local, share, Canon Live, Lumas, HD. You can just copy it here, and I have it here now. I need to save my Canon Live. I have never saved it. I'm 10, yeah. So yeah. Um, I don't know, I'll just name it this for now. I close it, and then I need to open it again. So my kernel live is here. I open my project again. I can remove the color clip that was useless. I can change the motion tracking and just uh, hide it, because I don't need it. And I will import the PNG that I made, so it's here. I put it on top of my clip. So right now it doesn't show like little by little, but it's here. I will add composite. For once I'm not using composite and transform. I could use wipe, but I will need to change the keyframes because it's not going to be perfect. So I go to composite. I choose the path I just made. So it's, it's called path in this case. At the end, I want the opacity to be at the maximum. At the beginning, I want it to be at the minimum. And now I can look at it, and you can see it, there's a slight difference. So I'm gonna change that with keyframes. So here, you can see even at the very beginning, there's a difference. So I need it to appear like here, there needs to be more percent, like here, perfect. Okay, that looks good. Here is the biggest difference. At the moment where it's biggest, you add a new keyframe and you change the opacity. Okay, perfect. So yeah, it follows it nicely. Then uh, yeah, it's way too fast here until maybe here. 
and you add a new keyframe and change it. You know, it's just adjustments. And then it's way too fast. So here I'm going to add a new keyframe, change the opacity. So it's almost done. And here it needs to be at 100% actually. Let's see what that looks like. So this is the first method for when it's kind of like a weird path, like complicated. Okay, there's still a difference here. I'm going to add a keyframe, maybe somewhere around here. Uh, even, yeah. So yes, this is for when it's quite complicated. With a turn, it's not easy to do it with rotoscoping, but the second option is to do it with rotoscoping. Um, so we're gonna do that for the second uh, point. So the beginning is the same. You're gonna use motion tracking again, uh, go to the first frame and analyze. When it's done, check that it's good. I will copy the tracking data, copy it onto a random clip again. So just add transform. Um, import keyframes, okay, and you can see that I have the right thing. I can just print grab the thing again and open it into GIMP and ch I change its size. Perfect. I'm gonna make a path. So yeah, it's exactly the same. Right now it doesn't really matter um, what direction I start up because I'm not gonna make a wipe. I'm gonna make a new layer. And this one is going to be yellow. Uh, you could make like a changing color as well. We can do that. Like we'll make it yellow to blue. I just hide all of the tracks I don't want and I export it. I go back onto Cadden Live. I drag that thing and it's here. I will add a track so I can put it all on the same video. I can remove the random thing I did before for the... <laughs> And now I have a second path thing. This one I'm going to do with rotoscoping. It will take a bit of time as well. I don't know which one is faster, but rotoscoping is often cleaner. So yeah, you might uh, consider that. I don't know. So rotoscoping, I will make it basically like five points, one at the end, two for the whole width. So I can just remove this one. Ah, uh, this is ugly. Okay, sorry, I had to move that again. I hate this new thing at the beginning. I will change that to minimum to hide the black. And so, yeah, at the, well, we'll just s save that frame for here. Um, but here, we will move everything down and lower. Yes. So then it will appear. Choo -choo -choo. And yeah, we need to continue this track for the whole thing. So yeah, I will make it faster. See ya. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Wait, I don't want to see the rotoscoping effect. It's ugly. Just, and I will hide the motion tracking as well. <laughs> okay. Well, it's pretty nice. Oh, it's a bit slow at the end. I will just change that a little bit. Add another keyframe here. And I will need to move this. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, so I guess this is it. I hope you like it. As always, you can ask for requests in the description. Oh, also, new thing, if you weren't here for the live last week, I have a Discord server. I'm not sure what it's good for, but it's here. You can ask questions and like I will post my video. Well, I will post announcements for videos and live streams there. And yeah, if you have Discord, you can join. There's not, not much activity. It's not uh, going to kill you with notifications, you know. Okay, bye-bye. See you next week.